Welcome to Getting Sketchy Live, brought to you by TheVirtualInstructor.com. And now, let's get sketchy. Hello there, everyone. Matt here with TheVirtualInstructor.com, and welcome to Getting Sketchy Live, the greatest live broadcast in all of YouTube, of course. We're glad to have you along with us for the next hour as Ashley will be creating the drawing tonight, and I'll be sitting back and watching and commentating and looking at all your chat messages, which is really fun to It do. is fun. Um, if you don't know what Getting Sketchy is, it's where either myself or Ashley, we try to create a drawing for you inside of 45 minutes. And we also sprinkle in some instruction and some entertainment in there as well. And uh, we'll see if the drawing can be completed inside of 45 minutes here. Um, Ashley, are you ready to go over there? Yeah, I think so. I'm ready and I hope you guys are ready. The materials are pretty light tonight, colored pencils. So if you have some, I hope you'll follow along. And of course, we'll talk a little bit more about my color selections, my palette. Um, when we switch over to the other camera. Absolutely, and I'll remind you, if you are watching this live on YouTube, there's a chat box. Of course, you can post comments and questions. If you do have a comment or question that's directed specifically at myself or Ashley, we encourage you to use the super chat function or the super sticker, whatever that stuff is. Um, that, of course, will get your comment uh, predominantly uh, positioned in the chat box. Uh, it just costs a little bit of money, but it goes to help this channel out. So we would appreciate it if you went that route. And we'll be glad to answer those questions and address those comments for you as well. And if you like this kind of stuff, of course, don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you can be notified and click on the notification bell so you can be notified when we do go live and also when I post uh, some of the static videos that aren't live, um, of course. And one more thing. And that is the membership program over at thevirtualinstructor.com. If you want to take your drawing and painting skills to another level, guys, you got to check out the membership program. There you'll find uh, a bunch of different courses on drawing and painting, covering a variety of media and subject matter. We also do live lessons. Right now we're in the middle of a live lesson series on Scratchboard, and we'll be continuing with that right after we're done with this show tonight. Uh, mm -hmm. But you have access to all of the recorded live lessons that we've ever done. Um, and that is a lot. And there's also weekly uh, critiques as part of the Members Minute. And if you're a teacher, there is a year-long curriculum for visual arts teachers, which includes absolutely everything you need to teach except for your warm body. Um, it includes handouts, uh, evaluations, I almost said tests, <laughs> uh, examples, and projects, and so on, everything you need to teach. Of course, if you want to learn more about the program, there is a link in the description below. You can check it out for free for a week. Everyone starts out with a week-long trial. We also offer a 30-day money-back guarantee beyond that. I think you'll love it if you haven't checked it out already. And if you want to just check out three of our course videos and ebooks for free and also get on our mailing list, uh, there's a link for that in the description below as well. I think I put that in the description below. I'm pretty sure I did. So, all right. All right. That's, that's all the stuff I need to say. And hello to everyone in the chat box as I scroll back down and get us caught back up with all of that stuff. All mm -hmm. right. I think we're ready. To, are you ready to switch over? Yeah, I think so. Let's, right, let's talk about on. our pencils. All right. So I went ahead and pulled out of my Prismacolor set. Um, the pencils that I believe I'll use, um, just so it's a little easier to find them. And of course, I've got the rest of my set. It's a Prismacolor set of 72. Um, so if I need to rummage through the other trays, I can do that. But my plan, what I believe I see and what I believe we possibly would use, it may not be all of these. I've got a beige. Uh, we've got yellow chartreuse. Black. We are going to use a little bit of black tonight. A process red, that's an uh, that's going to be an important color at the very end. Chartreuse, that's probably our dominant color of the frog. Um, I do have a white. We're going to probably start early with the white. 70% French gray, which is kind of a brownish gray. Um, I do have a blender that is not a Prismacolor brand, but I don't know that I'm actually going to use it. I just uh, went ahead and pulled it out. Olive green, 50% warm gray. I have canary yellow. I'm not sure if we'll need that because we do have the yellow chartreuse. I have a dark brown, a lime peel. That's a great color. We'll be one using of, one that. One of my favorites. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I have apple green, but I don't know if we'll need that. Maybe. Um, and then 50% cool gray. So there's a warm gray and a cool gray. Um, and then I have crimson lake, but I don't know that I'll need that. And, of course, I have a very 
very nice writing pencil, a number two writing pencil. And that's the one that we're going to start with. So I'll go ahead and move my tray to the side. Of course, the pencils are in the tray right now, but in 45 minutes, they'll be scattered all over the table. And uh, we're going to we're going to approach this a little differently than how I usually draw organic subject matter. So the frog, of course, is an organic subject. And a lot of times I start with pretty straight lines to just kind of grab the general proportions without um being too fussy over the details of the contour, the outline. Uh, but because we're working on black paper and I'm going to use a pencil a little bit, I don't want to have a lot of pencil outline to erase or to accidentally go over with a colored pencil and then not be able to erase. And sometimes it looks darker under a colored pencil. So what I think I'm going to do tonight is just carefully box out where I believe the frog is going to go based on the the proportions of our rectangle. The photograph and the picture plane that we'll be drawing on or that I'm drawing on is the same proportion as the reference. And so I think I can kind of box it out. And then my plan is to use chartreuse, our dominant color, um, to actually put in a light and relatively detailed um, contour inside of that box. Now I'm going to work lightly so I can... Um, probably use an eraser if I need to remove some colored pencil. You know, colored pencil doesn't erase well, but it does erase. So if we don't put much down, we can erase it if we need to. Um, and then I'll get rid of the pencil box that hopefully you guys will see on the feed. You know, being on black paper, it may be a little more challenging. That's why I'm explaining what we're going to do. And, um, and then we'll um, commence to rendering. That is uh, with color and value. So I want to get the um, another reason I, I don't want to work with a pencil generally and then go back with the colored pencil to work up my contours is time. You know, there's a lot going on in this little frog, uh, more than we can actually capture in a 45-minute span. So we're going to try to focus on, on color and value, not so much on texture, um, but proportion is always important. And so if we can just get a little box in there to work inside of, put this frog in a box, then, uh, then he might come out singing, hello, my honey, hello, my darling, hello, my ragtime gal. We'll see. Um, if you want to uh, have your own copy of this photo reference, you can find it under the community tab on the YouTube channel to get to the YouTube channel. Just click on the little icon of my face down in the lower left-hand corner. That will take you to the channel. Then look for the community tab. And the top post on the community tab, if you're watching this live, will be this photo reference with a link back to this video. So you can come right back if you want. Um, we'll have the photo reference up the entire time as Ashley is already cheating. Just put a couple marks I haven't there. started the I was, timer I was just, yet. I was testing to see if it cheating. would show up on the feed. Cheating. And, does. and I knew this question was going to come up. <laughs> Terry. Terry asked what size uh, this yes. paper is because it's tiny. That's right. Good question. So there's a pencil there. So you can get an idea for the size. Um, but it is... He's going to make up a number. Mm, okay. <laughs> There's a ruler. Okay, I got it. I got it. It's ruler? five by six and three quarters. Oh, that's very precise. Yeah. Um, now, the ruler's over here. Okay. I can hand it to you. Okay. Let, 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 let's double check this because I, I did tape it down and cover it up about a quarter of an inch all the way around. So I think we're looking at, thanks, Matt. I think we're looking at six. Wait a minute. You got to find the crazy ruler, is yeah, this? Yeah, there's. <laughs> oh my gosh! Every little thing you would need to measure. Is, there we go. Um, okay, so it looks like it's about six and a half, about six and a half inches. That's pretty close. Yeah, very close, by almost five inches. So okay, pretty close. So it's slightly close. shorter than what I, smaller than what I said, but it's smaller all the way around. So it should still be in the same proportion, <laughs> I hope, as the photo reference. Now, the reason you're working so slow, or not slow. No. Uh, the reason why you're working so small is because colored pencils are a slow medium. Yeah, they're a small, uh, they're, they're, they make small marks and they're a slow medium and we build up layers. So most of this frog will be covered a couple of times, maybe three times. So if this was, so the, the surface area is, is deceptive in terms of uh, how many times we may have to pass over it. So, and somebody wondered if this was a real frog or a figurine. It, it looks real to I me. I think it's a real frog. It's real to he, me. He is pretty perfect looking. He is. He's contemplating. Yeah, yeah. He, they, they, they're deep. He's thinking about life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That fly I ate right. just now was delicious. <laughs> I think he's real. Mm -hmm. But uh, he's, he's going to be real for us tonight. All right, Matt, I guess we'll go ahead and start the timer since I cheated. All right. I don't want to make any more marks without the timer on. 
All right, we'll start the timer right now. 45 minutes on the clock. All right. I told you to start the timer, and I didn't have my reference out. And I'm not sure if Ashley said this or not, but this is black color line paper by Canson. That's right. Uh, someone asked? Yeah, the color line paper is a little bit smoother than me tents or me tents, if that's what you're used to working with. Still good paper, still um, a good brand, Canson. All right, so hopefully you can see that faint box there. I think our frog is going to fit into there. That's it for the pencil. It's time, well, we'll, <laughs> we'll, we're going to go ahead and move on to colored pencil now. And I'm going to be a lot, you know, pretty slow and deliberate, I believe, I intend to be, with, um, with now, our contour. Now, uh, if, you, if it helps you as an artist, you can draw a box over the top of your frog on your photo reference oh, and yeah, that's that might good. help you uh when you create the drawing if you decide to take the approach that ashley's taking here uh, you could do that with photoshop or any other editing program out there photo editing program out there there's lots of free ones or you could just print out the reference and draw it physically over the top but having mm -hmm. that box up there will help you see the negative shapes that's when true. You are These little guys the that were kind of cutting out. Is right. What you're thinking. All right. So I'm making little marks and then kind of asking myself how far am I away from the edges or from the middle, the middle of my box. Right, so we've made it to an eye. Now I think I'm going to stop there and work around the bottom some. Try to keep working um, in two directions and hopefully uh, things will kind of come together. This is definitely an interesting approach using this box. You know, and, and it's, it's partly um, inspired by the timer. Okay. <laughs> just, just in the interest of time, it might save a little bit. Okay, so it looks like the farthest little knuckle of his hands are those hands are a little bit below or, or, or maybe they're across from his ankle i'm not sure what all these joints are in the frog's legs so i'm gonna but i'm using the frog's legs the little portion that i have drawn um to help me place where his his hands go there we go almost up to our hero's face all right so i think i'll jump back up over here to where this large bulging eye is. You know, the frogs have started making their noises around here. Oh, yeah? Have you noticed that? Um, no, I haven't. I'll have to come over here and hang out in your backyard. Well, if you're outside, don't really hear them. <laughs> At my house, I yeah. I hear them more so at the baseball field, um, and they're pretty loud. But this is the time of year when they start making a racket. Yeah, right when it gets dark. All right, working our interesting frog leg in here. Now you know I used to have a koi pond at my last house oh, that yeah. I built and there I had some go. fish in there and some frogs made it their home. And, um, when we moved, I decided to break the koi pond down. So mm -hmm. had to remove all the rocks. Did and you fill in just the break hole. it down or did you like bring it here to your, I did not bring it okay. anywhere. No. Um, and you know, I had to, Remove all the rocks, which had a bunch of black widow spiders in it, but I enjoyed murdering them. Um, but I had got all the animal life out of there. Mm -hmm. And it set for a couple weeks with just like muddy slush at the bottom. So finally, I had to get rid of the muddy slush. Yeah. And I was by hand taking the muddy slush Ugh. and removing it. Uh, I used a shovel at first, but then I had to get down and with my hand. 
and I went in and grabbed some of the slushy mud mm -hmm. and it moved oh. and it was a huge frog. Oh, wow. That was, I guess, trying to stick it out. He was buried in there. He was not going to leave. Um, but that, that scared me pretty good there. Mm. Frogs can be scary. Yeah, they get pretty big. That was a huge frog. Now, I'm too. assuming huge. that what we're drawing tonight is a frog. It could be. Yeah, it looks like a frog. It's not yeah. a toad. No, the toads typically are a little bit more wordy. Yeah. They have a drier appearance. Yeah, and right. Usually toads are brown. They're pretty bumpy. I've, I used to catch toads a lot when I was growing up. Matt, did you do that? Of course. Yeah. That's why I had warts <laughs> That's right. in my hands. That's where the warts came from. All right, so I did make a change. Uh, maybe my box was a little wide, so I've moved the nose of our frog back a little bit and his, and his eye back a little bit. Now I'm going to go ahead and look for where the green of the body um, meets the white underbelly of our frog. Now the real question is, what is this frog sitting on? Looks like a piece of roofing paper yeah it kind of does look like tar paper. paper of oh, course you are I'm too familiar with <laughs> roofing paper <laughs> that was one of my jobs in college you know we used, used to roof houses i know that's why i said of course you are yeah um we used roofing paper in one of the classes i took in college to make cylinders and then we poured plaster of paris in those cylinders and then once it hardened, we could remove the roofing paper and then carve out the plaster. Oh, okay. It was pretty, pretty neat little way to just because you get can a tear, tear it off really easily. Yeah, and the idea. Uh, it wouldn't, you know, it didn't stick to the plaster, and it gave you a nice cylindrical form to that's start a, with. That's a good idea. I never yeah. thought of using roofing paper as a as an art material all right now we do need to go ahead and find where our eye and where our, our nostril is and mouth and then uh, and then we'll be on to rendering so it looks like the right edge of our eye is below the the other eye bump but to the left of the center of that bump so if this is the center of the bump i'm going to move a little left and then down and hopefully that'll be about the right place. Some people suggest that maybe it's we that go. weed stop fabric, mm -hmm. you know, yard fabric or yeah. whatever they call it. Yeah, it could be that. Could be felt. I don't know. It doesn't matter. It's black. It doesn't matter, right. It's black. It's got a little sheen to it. It's got a little sheen. All right, now we've got a few little shapes here of a uh, frog skin right above the front leg, the foreleg. And Stella says, thank you for not doing a spotter. <laughs> so do you know what we're going to do next week, Stella? Not a spider. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But you tempted I'm, me. I'm pretty good with that. We've got some contours in there and a color that should blend in with the, with the rest. So now's a good time to remember that we did have some graphite to remove. All the graphite is on the outside of our frog, but we may get some colored pencil out there anyway. So we do want to do want to remove it. And you can't really tell where I had erased the original face. Um, it came off pretty well with this final eraser and uh, there being just a little bit on there to begin with. All right, now I'm going to actually go ahead and, and find some of these lighter areas. You know, the frog is pretty shiny. The light's from the front, kind of from the front, a little bit from the right, but, um, but from above. And we're picking up highlights all through here and a lot on the face. So we're actually going to uh, jump in with a white pencil. Oh, you know what? I need to know where that nostril is. So I'm going to use my black, which will, would eventually go there anyway, and uh, move from the eye at the angle that we see that darker line 
and hopefully find where the nostril is. There we go. I know that seems like a small detail, but it's more like an anchor that I can use um, to help find an, uh, the highlights here that are right above the opening of the mouth. Yeah, Jan, I had to work really hard not to laugh out loud into the mic at your comment. Jan's comment You got a good is, one? The, yeah, uh, yeah, it's great. The frog is sitting on his own drawing paper, which he bought to draw humans. <laughs> <laughs> oh, a good one. Oh, uh, that's a great one, there, Jan. That's hilarious. He's doing that right now on frog YouTube. <laughs> on frog YouTube. Hi-ho. <laughs> Welcome to Frog YouTube. You know, I picked this. I picked this subject just so you would do the frog voice. Yeah, I completely tonight. forgot about that. <laughs> tonight we're going to be drawing some humans and some pigs. <laughs> Piggy, sit still. Piggy, <laughs> Kermit, 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 stop it! I don't know if the Muppets are as popular as they used to be. They should be. Yeah, they sure should. Those jokes came. Pretty fast, too. You had to be you, paying attention you know, to get the, them all. The old Muppet movies uh, are so hilarious. They are so funny. If you've not seen the old Muppet movies, like the Muppet movie, the yeah. great Muppet caper. Uh, what was another one? The uh, Muppets take Manhattan. Oh, yeah. That one? Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's where Kermit gets hit by a car and gets gets amnesia and he goes to someone and they make him an accountant <laughs> <laughs> because he can't remember who he is and all the accountants are frogs too so it seemed natural right it's yeah. the frog job he goes to a doctor and the doctor is seen as hilarious the yeah, doctor takes a long his leg time and bends it all the way back behind his head and because he's got frog legs, so he can handle that, I guess. Muppets go to space. I don't think I've seen that one. That's that's on my list now, Amanda. Now, a lot of this white will um, be covered with or mixed in with our chartreuse color, but we're going ahead and finding these spots now. Just, to, I think there's some confusion on who is who here. So, Ashley is the one drawing. That's right. And I am the, Matt is the one talking to the talk right now. Yeah. Well, I'm so, talking too. But. Yeah, it's hard to tell probably because all they see is your hand. That's true. Speaking of which, let's, let's try a different angle here. All right. Oh, Let's the see. mic's in the way of that one. So oh. Oh, you don't have to move it. We'll okay. go to that one. There we go. Oh, Got another okay. view. Here we go. Of the frog. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, she's we'll got go some shiny skin. I'll go back to the overhead. <laughs> now, you know, we're not going to wor worry too much about the, the actual real texture of our frog. Um, but we're working on black paper, and though we'll go over areas a few times, or at least probably a couple of times minimum, um, there'll still be some little bits of, of black flecks from our color line paper that show through here at the end. And maybe it'll contribute to the idea that there is texture, but our hands are pretty light. So I'm going to put a little, a little white over there. We've got a little shiny spot here on our frog's furthest forearm. And actually, there is... We'll, we'll, we'll save the white that goes in there for now. Now, we do have some frog toes down here. Have you ever eaten frog legs? I have not, but you, do you remember the restaurant called the Steamboat? I don't, I don't think know so. if you had moved to the South Side while Wait the a Steamboat was still there. Wait a minute. It feels like I'm drudging up an old memory right now. Well, I think because my some of my family lived here before I did, and we would visit them. Okay, I feel like we might have gone there. Well, the Steamboat was here. a fixture South Side. Mm -hmm. WS, you know. Oh, yeah. You know the neighborhood. Oh, yeah. It's uh, my neighborhood. So it wasn't really the best part of town. Yeah. And that, you know, that is where I, I lived for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, and we would go eat at the steamboat, or I remember going to the steamboat on several occasions. But I remember they, they had frog legs there. I never got Wow, them. in a restaurant. In a restaurant in Southside WS. Yeah, I only thought you could, had, I thought you had to eat Uncle, uh, 
eat frog legs at your uncle's house because that's where I always ate them. Oh my gosh, you did eat frog legs? Oh, you... well, when I was a kid, um, my uncle, one of my uncles would go frog gigging. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, frog so, gigging. So I'm familiar. I remember opening up my grandmother's fridge and there was a bread bag in there full of something green. And that's what it was. Mm. They were frog legs. Yeah, I just couldn't. Now that sound, sounds I... probably pretty crazy to a lot of folks. Um, but uh, my wife's from New Orleans, and I've learned to eat even weirder stuff. You can only imagine. All right, so I used um, uh, apple green to go ahead and find where some of our frog's shadow is going to be on his body. And, of course, he's got um, some other little shadowy areas, particularly kind of close to some of these uh, highlights. Now, speaking of frog legs, there is a billboard for a sign on the way to the beach that for a restaurant called The Frog and the Chef. Mm -hmm. And it's got a, a huge picture of like gourmet looking frog legs on it. And they really look like kind of like a, not a pork chop, but a lamb chop. Hmm. Or in the picture it is. And, you know, since my, my culinary uh, intelligence is so limited, it may be a lamb chop, huh. but I think it, I think it, it, it doesn't look quite right to be a lamb chop. I yeah. think it is a frog leg. Well, I've eaten rattlesnakes and turtles. Not regularly. You've eaten rattlesnake and turtles? Mm -hmm. I don't, I've heard that turtles are, are really dangerous to eat. Because um, they're nah, nah, everybody, they're very, nah, very turtle dirty. Soup, turtle soup. Yeah, that I've heard that turtle soup is really dangerous to eat. Well, I had it for Thanksgiving meal one year. Oh my gosh, <laughs> turtle soup. Yeah. Was it good? Yeah, I mean it. It was soup, you know. So there's all kinds of other flavorings and stuff in and there. Did you did where did you eat rattlesnake? We don't even have um, rattlesnake. I ate here. rattlesnake in downtown Roanoke, Virginia, when I was a kid. And it was in Chile. So it's rattlesnake chip. I guess we do have Eastern Diamondbacks, don't we? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We're part of the... We've got rattlesnakes around here. But I've never actually seen one in the woods. I've seen a lot of copperheads. I guess it's appropriate. I, mean, I know we're working on an amphibian right now, but I guess it's okay, appropriate to talk about reptiles. All right, it's laying in some of our chartreuse now. Or, yeah, that's right, chartreuse. And we'll keep working this leg up a little bit and use it as kind of a guide for the rest of our rendering. So I'm going to switch back to apple green. I believe it's apple green here. Work a little bit of that through the middle of our frog's thigh. And Peter says that frog legs taste like chicken. I heard that too. I think I heard that when I was in the steamboat restaurant. But you know what happened to the steamboat re steamboat restaurant is, uh, I think somebody came in. Th this is not surprising, but I think someone came in at closing time, robbed the store, and shot someone. I think someone died there. That's that's what I remember. I yeah. remember hearing people tell the story of the steamboat. Yeah, and then it was here. shut down. Yeah. after that. All right, that yeah, that sounds more familiar it was, to me. Because it was so random to have a restaurant like that in the middle of neighborhoods. Yeah. And not the best neighborhoods, which at my last house, or at that house that we lived at, it, it was not an inconceivable that we could probably walk. It was within walking distance mm -hmm. of our house. All right. Now, I do have, and I'm going to go ahead and put in, I believe, some of our yellow chartreuse here in the front or right side of our frog's far eye. There we go. And maybe a little more apple green. Mary Elizabeth says, oh, gosh, that's so bad for the restaurant. It it was bad for the restaurant and for the person who shot. Who got shot. Uh, but it, it, 
it wasn't the best place for a restaurant. It really, really wasn't. Now that I think back, it was pretty random that there was a, a restaurant there. Stella says, I live in Australia. We tried to eat things that could kill us since everything else does. Now, I got a question for you, Stella. Have you eaten the spiders? Yeah. Boy, that's where all the big, big scary spiders live, isn't it? <laughs> and she's and the one the, that doesn't want me to draw us most of the really poisonous snakes i think a lot of a lot of those are in australia y you know what would really scare me in australia is the sharks i would be afraid yeah, of there's the a lot of surfing that goes on in australia and there's a mad. lot of people getting eaten by sharks too Re yeah that's bad news mm -hmm. lord engine says kangaroo meat Kangaroo meat is okay. I think I'm just going to stick with chicken and ribs. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I'm going to ever have frog legs. I don't know. Maybe. Mate, we'll see. We'll okay, see. Just get, getting a little olive green here under our eye. Under the left corner a little bit. Just to darken that up some. Get some dimension in there. Maybe a little bit of that. Color between our highlights. Of course, probably use a little black in there too. Emily is asking, are these every week? Referring to the live streams. They're every week when we're in season. And as long as something doesn't come up like health related, I think we had to skip a, a week this week or a, this season uh, due to COVID. Due to my family. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, uh, we're in season 11 right now. So if, you know, there's, 10 other seasons you can go back and watch. But this is the ninth drawing, right? That's right. And next this week will be, will be my last for the season. The last drawing of the season. I'll be doing the drawing next week. And then we'll have uh, an 11th episode in the season where we look back at all the art that we created during the season and we critique ourselves. Uh, so after tonight's uh, broadcast will be two more episodes in this season and we'll take a few weeks off and then we'll come back and do season 12 well, start it up again that's right all right slowly starting to increase our pressure a little bit which makes things in this case, mostly lighter. We're working with mostly very oh, light yeah, and I, colors. I completely forgot about the crocodiles in Australia, too. Yeah, I mean, we all learned how dangerous those were from Crocodile Dundee. Yeah. Play those 80s movies. They were crazy. Now when I think about them or watch them again, I'm like, they're all so silly. The concept, like you know? when Crocodile Dundee went to New York, right? And that guy tried to rob him with the switchblade. He pulled out his big knife. Right. And said, oh, what I pulled knife. out his fourteen. This is a knife. knife. Yeah. Buddy is asking Ashley, did you use the dark green as an underpainting for the shadow? Mm, um, here, I think I, I did. I used a little bit of olive green in there. That's our that's our darkest green, and then um of more of the apple green. So they're both they're both there in the shadow. In fact, I need that apple green now. That dark olive green is almost reading kind of cool, but it's it's really more of a warmer yellow. Yeah, all of these yellow, are I mean, relatively green. warm, but next yeah. to one another maybe less so. Mhm. Mm you know. Like we don't have a Kelly green or anything like that, but uh Brazen Hearted asks, do you guys have a Discord channel? Uh, no, we do have a forum over at the virtual instructor.com, which is free to join. I think that's similar to a discord. All right. We're using our beige color now, and I'm just kind of, um, filling in where the hand is. There's a small gap between some of his, his little fingers. So I preserved that, but I haven't really distinguished any of the fingers yet from one another. I hope you guys don't mind me calling them fingers. Oh, they're fingers. They taste like chicken fingers. 
<laughs> and we'll use our black pencil for that. All right, continuing with the shadow, but now on the, um, the whiter underbelly of our frog. And I've got the French gray out for that. There's not, not much white in the white underbelly. Pretty much all in a shadow. I've got some areas that need to be green that I haven't hit yet, so we'll be bouncing back to those colors in a minute. We're doing a lot, of, lot more bouncing around soon. Terry and Buddy, thank you both for your comments there, um, adding to information. Adding some information about forum there. Yeah, the forum is, is a great place. It's, it's pretty active and there's lots of great artwork to explore over there too. And people answering each other's questions. It's really a great place. Okay, this is the 50% warm gray now. So it's, but it's, you know, it looks a little cooler compared to the French gray that's already down. We put a very light amount in it that down where our lightest area in the belly is and then uh and then move back to the white in that area jan is hitting us with uh an interesting fact here okay it says frogs have four fingers and five toes do they have a thumb well or is that included in the finger count you know it looks like it has a one finger that is not going in the same direction as the others on that far. Yeah, underneath hand. his neck. Yeah, yeah that's right. Kind of look thumbish, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. But surely a little thummy. Maybe it's just a short finger. Um, Peggy asked, "What brand of colored pencils you are using?" So and Ashley we're is using, using Prismacolor. Prismacolor Premier colored pencils. That's right. Okay. Just made that mouth a little sharper and stronger now with a black. And there's a little black line that runs through the body that separates the white belly from the green back. Green back. And Steve asks, are you live later? Yes, we'll be live at 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time at the virtualinstructor.com under live lessons. Uh, that broadcast is for members, so you do have to be a member in order to participate. Uh, we're continuing with our scratch board etching of a bee. Pretty, pretty large scratch board etching. It is. Um, and we are, I think it's lesson seven tonight of the series. So the live lessons aren't like getting sketchy. Uh, well, they're, they're similar in that they're broadcast live, but here on Getting Sketchy, we, we're creating looser, Looser, quick drawings. Mm -hmm. Thus, the name getting sketchy. For, for the live lesson, we're creating completed pieces of artwork. So the live lesson series are spread out over many lessons. Um, it's kind of like it's kind of like having a live class. Um, we cover a, a bunch of different mediums and, and subject matter there too. So, all right, just looking. I am breaking out. The canary yellow a little bit just to get some warmer temperature and there's no time iris <laughs> yeah right another, the time limit is another. 10 weeks <laughs> we usually stop it, somewhere around 10 weeks it really is 10 weeks i i don't like uh, a lesson series to go over 10 lessons and i've brought a few lessons to 10 10 lessons have you ever done one that's that long I don't, I'm not sure. that Pen and ink with the marker over it. That was close to ten. I think, I think it was eight. Yeah. yeah. Okay, eight. So Seven I don't think that's close. 10. Yeah, I mean that's close. that's pretty long. It wasn't one that I thought would be five or six, <laughs> and it was more more than that. Now, interestingly, you know, we've got a white highlight in the eye, but on top of the pupil, there is a highlight, but it's not quite white. So I'm going to put a little bit of gray right underneath that highlight. So just be careful with that. Even shiny spots in the eye can be darker than white. All right, well, I think go. you're doing a good job capturing the contemplative attitude of this frog. Good. So yours good. looks like it's thinking about something, too. 
perhaps how he's going to start his drawing of a human. <laughs> his drawing of Matt over on Frog YouTube. His drawing of Matt? Is yeah. That what yeah, he's drawing a picture <laughs> of you right now. <laughs> With his four little fingers. Uh -huh. <laughs> All right, so um, oh, I've got one green spot we haven't touched with any colored pencil yet, so let's do that. And then we'll just continue adding layers and rendering. Looks like we've got about 15 minutes to do that. And we've got to find a way to throw some other colors in here too, not just green. Okay. Hear my pencils rolling. Yeah, they're around. rolling. They're all, all over the place. The place. <laughs> right, just as I predicted. It's uh, it's it's a madhouse over here. You know, I get in the habit of holding the colored pencils that I'm using in my left hand. That's a good idea. Until you have this huge fistful of right. That's what I end up with. Is a fistful of two, pencils yeah. and fistful of dollars. Well, they're not dollars. They cost dollars. Yeah, that's right. They used to be dollars. Now they're Prismacolor <laughs> pencils. <laughs> All right, let, let's see. Looking for that olive green again. There we are. It's our darkest green. People are saying now the frog is meditating. Mm -hmm. He's, he is. It's very peaceful. All right, now that we're going over some areas that have already have waxed down, it's starting to feel like the pencils are gliding a little bit more. And olive green, because it's really dark in our ankle area. There we go. Use some yellow chartreuse. We've got a little bit of a leg sticking out the, mm, behind delicious. the back. Yeah, delicious leg. We'll make that a pretty bright. Well, you know, going back to the frog legs thing, it, I yeah. can't see how a frog leg would be an entire meal. You have to eat a bunch of them. Kind so, of like eating oysters or something like that. So lots of frogs are eaten in one meal. Um, yeah, like bunches of legs, kind of like crab legs. Yeah, but so crabs you have, to, have lots of legs. <laughs> it takes frogs. It have takes two. more frogs. To, yeah, yeah, that's that's true. It takes more frogs to get a meal. Now this is, you know, I haven't eaten or even seen frog legs since I was a kid. Legendary Southern cuisine. All right. Let's try a bit of our yellow down here. Seeing more of the tooth start to disappear. Now, Jen says, should not have used pastel paper. Need to buy some black drawing paper. Um, I'll tell you, Jen, you can probably continue with your drawing on the pastel paper. You just need to put more layers of the colored pencils down. Because what will happen is you'll fill in the tooth or texture of the paper and you'll build up a waxy layer um, or you'll build up some wax on the surface and at some point, it'll start to feel more like you're painting with the colored pencils and not so much like you're making marks on a coarse surface. Now, that's dependent on what type of pastel paper you're using and how heavy the tooth is, but um, it might just require a little bit more layering of the colored pencils to really get to that le level. Now, I'm not sure if Ashley's going to get to that point in this drawing mm -hmm. since there's only 10 minutes left, but if he continued to layer the colored pencils, you would eventually see those plaque specks of the paper disappear and it would start to look more like a painting. Mm -hmm. uh, so don't give up quite yet. 
Lord Engine says that chick, uh, frog legs taste like chicken with a fishy undertone. Ugh. That sounds. Ugh. That sounds like when you go to Bojangles and you get the, what do they call it? It's it's a fish sandwich, but it's called like the bow angler or something like that. <laughs> I don't know. I've never Bow-fish. had one, but I imagine having worked at Chick Fil A for a good part of my life, that if you cooked fish in the same oil that you cooked chicken, it would probably taste like frog legs. Ah, I guess right. So. Yeah, it would yeah, because it, it would, would have it would have that chickeny synthetic frog legs taste, but you would eat, be eating fish. Yeah, synthetic frog legs. We can recreate that flavor. No frogs are harmed. Okay. Pump up some of the light. And I've been... uh, A little bit of... Go ahead, Matt. We've got somewhere we can go to get frog legs. Francis Rose says, They have frog legs sometimes at Dynasty Buffet in Gastonia, North Carolina. All right. Okay, first of all, Dynasty Buffet sounds like a Chinese restaurant. It is. Okay. So are frog legs a Chinese cuisine? Um, China, you know, I've never been to China. You haven't? But I learned a lot about wet markets a couple of years ago. (laughs) Right. And it looked like every type of animal was in the wet market. So they were all covered with wetness. Right. We were all talking about the wet market. (laughs) Oh, they're all covered with COVID. The good old days. The good old days. Mary Elizabeth asks, are you going to do any of the background? Yeah, actually, I keep looking at the time because we just need just a couple of minutes to do a little bit of background. Um, and Stella says, can I get a happy birthday? It's my birthday tomorrow. Oh, gosh. Well, happy birthday, Stella. Yeah, happy birthday. Happy, happy birthday. I hope you have a great birthday, Stella. Hope this year in your life's the best one you've ever had. Mm-hmm. Other folks chiming in with the happy birthday. Like to see that. All right. And Lord Engine says that Asian markets are the best place to buy frog legs in the States. So we've got some you frog go. leg eating there you go. Uh, professionals here. Yeah. Experts. All good. Okay, is that the red you brought out that you said was going to be? Yeah. Important? Well, I threw a little bit of red down here. Yeah. Because I'm planning on putting some gray and some process red around the frog. Um, the frog is really yellow green, and the process red is is now we're not going to go strong, but the process red is really a red violet, and mm-hmm. those are complementary colors. So we're going to throw a little bit of the complement under I there. Wonder. Very weakly. Very weakly. I wonder what's wrong with the name magenta. I guess there is a magenta. Probably another looks yeah, there's pretty a, magenta-ish. Another magenta pencil. All right, this is the blender, but I'm and I'm using it a little bit, but not with a whole lot of pressure. Back to yellow chartreuse. That's really doing a good job of toning down that white. Yeah, glazing over the highlights now. Um, that actually went down really, really early. And you know what I see in the belly? People are saying What's, the belly color looks good. Uh, Peggy says that. That's Do you know what color I see in the belly? Purple. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I could use a little bit of my processed red down there because it's kind of close to that. And that's what's going to be possibly reflecting back up into our frog. We're the beeping. Right. We're getting ready to blow up here. Let's see. Now, let me use my black pencil real quick just to find any little accents or clear, clear up some areas for our sketch. Oh, Sandra says, how about laying off of the meat thing? I'm a vegetarian. ha, ha, ha. <laughs> well, I uh, drew some... Well, you're already laying off the meat. I drew some vegetables a couple weeks ago. I went on a vegetarian diet for a few months and survived just fine. It actually felt pretty good. And survived. Okay. 
Lord Engine says, Purple Belly would be the name of my biker rock band. Uh, <laughs> I like that. Purple Belly. Oh, now I'm going to grab our 50% cool gray, I believe. Yeah. And so I'll start making some strokes around our frog. Careful not to go too close to his edge here below his leg. Because that's where we've got some shadow. So you're going to let the black of the paper work as shadow? Yeah, is. and I, I mean, you know, we're going to run out of time. I may put some black marks in there, but I won't, may not need to. May not be necessary. We can isolate the shadow just fine with a little bit of gray. All right, a little stronger over here. Now we've got several vegetarians upset that we're talking oh, goodness. about eating meat. Oh, goodness. Well, you know, the world's full of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of diversity, and not that's everybody right. does right. the same thing. And I guess that's okay. We've got to give each other space to be ourselves. Now we got the meat eaters chiming in. Let let's let's keep oh, the, no. Here, let's oh, keep the chat box uh friendly, everyone. Right. Before it gets unfriendly. We're just talking about We don't about need it to be unfriendly. Food, culture, not necessarily it's our It's interesting own. stuff. Yeah, it's, it's interesting, interesting stuff. stuff. I mean, I you know, my the foods I ate were so narrow, such a narrow range of food growing up. And then I and then I got pretty much air. pop tarts, yeah, cereal, box cereal, hamburger helper, yeah. And uh, <laughs> I mean, no, I ate a lot of what a lot of people call soul food, you know, but it's country food to me. It's uh, green beans and cornbread and rattlesnakes, black eyed peas, rattlesnakes. Yeah, no, that turtle was, soup. Yeah, I well, see, no, that's the thing. Mm -hmm. When I married a person who's from from originally her family's from Louisiana, the New Orleans area, but um, they eat a lot of different stuff down there. And I wanted to fit in, like when we would go visit. So I made up my mind, I'm going to eat whatever it is they're fixing. And uh, they were also impressed by that. I thought, I'm doing the right thing. Mm -hmm. But I, I ate some things that I thought would never pass between my lips. Oh, I'm imagining you eating eyeballs and things like that. Whatever is in that soup. we got some Creole eyeballs here. Yeah. Of course, you know, a lot of what makes the food so good is its Cajun-style seasoning. Uh, it's good stuff. All righty. Now, we are going to get our process read out. You know, uh... I didn't use white for this. I used the gray just so I could get more marks in here. Um, there's still tons and tons of black paper showing through. That's kind of the look of this project, this, uh, this sketch. But uh, the white would have just been so powerful. So we used the gray instead. All right. Now, I'm pretty much just going to, with a light touch, glaze over everywhere I've been with the gray. And very light touch with now, our process red. Now, will you explain the reason why you're choosing... A red. Well, yeah, it, it, I, I see this red as red-violet. And red-violet is a cross from yellow-green on the color wheel. So it's as different from the color of the frog as black is from white. And so it just, just I think it just spices up the colors a little bit, mm -hmm. adds some interest. You know, um, variety is a principle of art that adds interest to a boring subject. And so I'm just trying to broaden our variety of color here. And those colors that are directly across from each other are called complementary. That's right. Now, it's not complementary. Like, you look nice today. You, what a great you skin really you nice have there, today. frog. Right. But um, <laughs> one thing that complementary colors do is make each other look nice today. Yeah, uh, and so nice. you can, uh, a lot of artwork that uses compliments is complimented. Good, good way to help people remember. That. Yeah, that's, I've said that a million times in the classroom, just like that. So 
And when you start studying color theory and you understand complementary colors, you see how much complementary colors are used in schemes for sports teams. Oh, and yeah. And you start seeing it more and more so in artworks. Anywhere the artist wants to or, or the, you know, the product wants to catch your eye. And Matt, I think that sports teams use them so that the players can recognize each other when they're moving around really fast on the field. You know, the their colors pop out even in their peripheral vision. Imagine throwing it like a no look bounce pass in basketball. You know, you want to know your well, pass. No look. You you're not looking at the not person. looking directly at them. <laughs> right. So um, I've got it. That's that's my theory that in sports it helps players to see each other. And then when and it looks good. It looks great. Yeah. And when they're not wearing their colorful jerseys, they're usually in a jersey version that is a black and white scheme. Again, for high or white. It's high yeah, or white. White right. is often used. So it's still always something that's going to be pretty high contrast. So, all right. There okay, Mary go. Elizabeth well, I wants guess. you to say that again real quick. I'll say it again real quick. Okay. Uh, complementary colors are colors directly across from each other on the color wheel. So you have red, yellow, and blue. They're primary colors. Then you have secondary colors, green, orange, and purple. Then you have tertiary colors. And those are the colors that are found in between primary and secondary colors. So if you look at a color wheel, blue is always going to be directly across from orange. Purple is always going to be directly across from yellow. No matter how you set up your color wheel, that will always be the case. Colors that are directly across from each other on a color wheel, meaning that you can draw a straight line from one color on one side to the other, those are complementary colors. So purple will always be complementary to yellow. Orange will always be complementary to uh, blue. And red will always be complementary to green. So you can use your knowledge of color theory to put together color schemes. And complementary colors are a scheme that you can use in a piece of art to add contrast and interest while also providing harmony because you have a limited color palette, meaning you're not using all the colors on the color wheel. So I hope that really condensed version helps. Yeah, a lot of folks <laughs> try to follow the lines on the color wheel, and they end up just going from one primary to another. So it's really important you're imagining a line through the very center right, of the color wheel. Right, directly across. Right. Okay, now, you know, of course, the color wheel um, is theoretical. It was originally, it was, I think it was Isaac Newton that made the first color Newton. wheel. Yes. And there's a lot of color wheels out there. Mm -hmm. So there's the common one that Matt and I kind of refer to and talk about, but there are artists out there that um, in, work in their own mind on a different sort of color wheel set or arrangement. I think it's, is it the Munsell color wheel that has five primaries, including magenta and cyan, different from uh, the other red and blue? I haven't heard of five primaries, I but I remember. do know that uh, some people will argue that magenta is one of the primary colors. Yeah, um, it's very different from red. Um, and, you know, a lot of it can get really confusing if you try to follow all of those, those rules, color wheels, but right. you really don't need to. Uh, you really just need to understand if, if you just go with a very basic understanding of the primary colors, secondary colors primary colors being red, yellow, and blue, you're still going to end up with color schemes and color relationships that do the same thing in a piece of art. So they can provide contrast, harmony, unity. If you use an analogous scheme, for example, those are colors that are right next to each other on the color wheel, three to five colors that are next to each other on the color wheel. So an example would be uh, yellow, yellow, green, and green. If you use those colors and the values of that color, those colors, that would be considered an analogous color scheme. That's going to provide mm -hmm. harmony and unity as well, but less contrast. Um, so there's lots of different color schemes out there. If you want to learn more about color theory and color schemes, there are tons of lessons over at the virtualinstructor.com that you can learn all those things. And uh, we try to make color theory uh, simple and easy to understand. So uh, I, I wouldn't spend too much time you know, devoting your life into yeah. and researching all of these different color wheels and yeah. getting confused. Yeah, it's a with rabbit color hole. Theory. Um, it's, it, it can be simplified and uh, presented in a way that you can use it in your own artwork pretty easily. Now, um, I don't know if you've noticed before, but cyan and magenta do create one heck of a color vibration, you know, and they're not supposed to be complements. They're kind of like primaries, but when you put a, a cyan and a magenta right next to each other, 
um, it looks like they're fighting for space. Well, know, that imaginary black line appears. Well, cyan is kind of like a cerulean blue. Yeah, yeah. And magenta, as we've already pointed out, is kind of like a, a light red purple. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think it's really beautiful together, those two. That's getting close to an orange and a blue. Getting close. <laughs> it's getting close. Yeah. But you can still right. create contrast by adjusting the value, too. So, you know, the value of the color makes a difference, too. So. Oh, for sure. Contrast is any, any type of difference you can create. It can even be with texture, just to help parts stand out. So. Yes, we know the time is up. Oh, gosh. We know it. The I, time I, is I, up. The time, been, timer is a suggestion. Just been working along. It's a strong suggestion. Though. Yeah. Yeah. I don't even know what. What are we looking at on time? Oh, it's seven seven thirty one. So, Horde Engine says I'm going to go annoy the art world by doing an entire painting in Viridian, <laughs> uh, the most unnatural green in the yeah, world. Right, right. Uh, yeah, that would yeah that would be uh, that's a good idea. <laughs> and and make sure it's like grass. Paint the grass with that color. All right, just a little. Okay. All right, I'm going to stop. All right, I'm done. All right, and very nicely keep, done. Just keep petting my friend. I wish I had a little top hat to set on him and a cane. So you could sing. You could have had those things. Yeah, you, you know that, uh, you know that. Hello, my darling. Yeah, Hello. oh gosh, I love that. I thought it was so funny. Those cartoons were the best. <laughs> <laughs> uh, weren't they really old cartoons, though? Uh, yeah, I guess they were 60s cartoons. So you were watching those cartoons eating turtle soup and rattlesnakes. Yeah, that's how I grew And Dukes of Hazard. <laughs> yeah. Looney now, Tunes, true Dukes story of Hazzard. here. I love the Dukes of Hazard so much when I was younger mm -hmm. that, um, and I remember this clearly, I, I fell and hurt my head, cut my head open. I had the scar right here across my forehead. Mm -hmm. Still there. And I had to go in and get stitches. And it was on a Friday night when the Dukes, when the Dukes were coming on. Yeah. And I remember looking out from underneath the, the green fabric over my eye where I was getting <laughs> the stitches and uh, asked my dad if I missed the Duke boys. And he said, yes. And I remember he said, crying, yes, Don, you missed the Duke boys crying so bad because I missed the Duke boys. That is funny. Yeah. I had a Dukes of Hazard birthday. Oh, did you? When That's I was awesome. five. Yeah, when I was five. I had a I had a Dukes of Hazard lunchbox. My mom and dad got me moonshine for my birthday. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, uh, to go with the rattlesnake and turtle, yeah, turtle right. soup. Well, that's what the Duke boys always had in the trunk of their car. They right. Never, well, I know. It I, was implied. I, 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 right. It was implied. Right. Well, <laughs> they weren't there liquor running days over. Supposed what, to didn't be. Didn't Uncle Jesse put a stop to that? Well, it was it was supposed to be Uncle Jesse that was still making the moonshine, what right? They and the do, boys what did ran they do it for money. The they, boys. I, what were their business? It's, they, they, they had a moonshine? trunk full of moonshine, right? But it never showed them no, running but, moonshine. But it's the reason the fuzz was all over them. You know, it's the reason Roscoe. I thought was they on. just didn't like those Duke boys. I, 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 we I were watching from the perspective cream. of the Duke boys. They should remake the show from the perspective of Roscoe and Boss. You know, that, know. that might be interesting. All right. This one's complete for our 45-minute sketch, and uh, I'm pretty happy with it. I really like having a little bit of that red in there. Yeah, that made a big difference. I think it makes a difference. I don't mm -hmm. think it, it, it shows up on the feed, I think, well enough. So, And we can see that same type of a color reflected in the belly a little bit, so it doesn't feel so out of place now. All right. Well, very Thank good. Thank you guys for being here tonight. And I hope you, uh, if you followed along, I hope you like your frog. Um, and Lord Engine says that my dad had one of the Dukes of Hazard stunt cars in his workshop. Wow. I, I think they had a lot of stunt cars. Oh, I bet so. Because I think every time they jumped a car, they'd throw it. <laughs> <laughs> and there was, there was always a huge dirt pile in the middle of downtown right in front of City Hall. Because that's where you keep right. your dirt piles, right? In right. your downtown. Yeah. Right. They're always working on the road. <laughs> anyway, um, let's go ahead and switch out okay. over here. All right, guys. I hope you enjoyed watching that drawing develop as much as I did. I certainly enjoyed it. And I also enjoyed the talk tonight in the chat, chat box. Um, the chat box. Uh, anyway, next week I'll be doing the drawing and... 
I'm not really sure what I'm going to be doing right now, uh, mm. but I will have the uh, link for the video and the photo reference up sometime probably Wednesday morning next week. You want to check back then. Uh, also, make sure you subscribe to the channel so you're and click on the notification bell so you're notified uh, when we do go live. And uh, next week will be the final drawing of the season. That's um, right. I'm thinking right now uh, maybe uh, white medium on black paper, but I'm not totally uh, married to that. So uh, we'll see. Uh, but I'll be doing the drawing next week. Ashley, do you have anything else? Uh, I've there. got nothing to add. Nothing to add. I hope you guys all have a great week and uh, make some art of your own between now and next Wednesday, and uh, and we'll see you then. Absolutely. Uh, so we're going to wrap things up uh, here on Getting Sketchy. For those of you who are going to join us for the live lesson, we'll see you in just time to get ready. A few minutes. Oh, we got a little. We yeah. got twenty minutes. Oh, okay. We'll get... um, so we'll see you That's guys good. then. And uh, with that, we're going to go ahead and sign out for this evening. Good night, everybody.